Hi, I'm Rick, and this week I am gonna put my limited plumbing skills to the test. God, I hope that worked. <laughs> the interior is finally framed on our schoolie bus build. Now it's time to install some plumbing. 100 gallons of cool, fresh water that just needs a leak-proof way to power a faucet. You know what? I really hope our plumber knows what he's doing. So yeah, this week we are installing plumbing. We're going to take this contraption that may or may not go a certain direction. And this is what's going to feed water to the entire bus. We're also going to have water coming in from the city supply. Hopefully that'll work too. And honestly, I've never done this before. My father was a plumber for a gazillion years back when Roman aqueducts were alive. But he kind of taught me stuff, but I don't think he had this stuff around back then. So you and I, we're going to be doing this together. This monstrosity is a 100 gallon freshwater tank. Now, why is it so big and why is it inside the bus? Uh, let's answer those in reverse order. Nikki was afraid that this was gonna freeze if we put it underneath of the bus. So it's going here underneath where the bed is gonna be. It barely, barely fits side to side. I'll have to show you in a little bit the accommodations we're making for it. And what was the other question I asked? Oh, I think that was why 100 gallons. We actually looked at the 40 gallons and some 50 gallons, but you know, if you're off grid and you really need water, you need water. Yeah, it takes up a whole lot of space, but you can only fill it halfway if you only want to carry 40 gallons and you can fill it up to 100 if that's what you want. Ah, this thing's going to be a monster and it's going to be really difficult to put in. I want to give you a basic lay of the land, kind of give you a feel for what it is we're doing. Hey, Harley, come here and help me. This is Harley. Hi, Harley. You want to help me show everybody what's in the bus? Hey, Paisley. Oh my God, these guys are absolutely crazy. I don't think they're going to be much help. Let me kind of give you a feel for what we are doing. This whole area back here is where the queen size bed is going to be. And right in front is where the giant water tank is. Now I'm going to build a platform. You'll see this in a later video. So that's covered. We can use storage. The water pumps and everything is going to be on that wall. Water, water, water runs down here. Here's a bathroom, needs water. There's the kitchen, it needs water. Now here's the fun part. I have to run water up all the way down the bus, all the way across the front, and there. Has to have water here. Why? It's a surprise for later. Don't tell them, Harley. Don't let them know what we're doing. Now the plan for today is very simple. We're gonna get the water tank mounted, we're gonna get the pumps and the accumulator and all that good stuff mounted, and we're gonna get a line run at least towards the bathroom and the kitchen. Now we don't have those things yet. We don't have faucets, we don't have sinks, we don't have any of that. So we're gonna have to cap the lines and reconnect them later, but we are gonna give this thing a pressure test. Kind of. You're not going to really enjoy the way I have to put water in there for now, but I'll explain that in a minute. So enough babbling. Let's start trying to put this together. Let's get that out of the way. We are using a PEX pipe today and using PEX fittings called Shark Bite. Now this stuff is sort of PVC vinyl. I don't know what it's made of, but it's a lot easier to run than copper. And you can get these in two sort of flavors. One is you put the pipe into the fitting and you crimp it and you clamp it and you make sure it don't leak. Shark Bites are real simple. You're gonna see, you just push. It goes click, click, and it's locked in place. That's all you gotta do and it's supposed to be leak proof. Okay, one last thing before we get started. All of the fittings, all of the pipes, everything that I'm using, I looked at a lot of YouTube videos to try to figure out how to do this. And there were some very good ones out there, but not a single one of them, ah, excuse me, my knees are going crazy. Not a single one of them provided a diagram for how this is actually supposed to work. But <laughs> I'm gonna do that for you. Stick around to the end and I'll explain. For now, let's really show you what's on the inside and why I got a problem. Okay, this is the business end of the tank. It has four different built-in outlets. Well, this is actually an inlet. This is how fresh water comes in. It's my current nemesis, my current problem. We can't actually fill the tank yet, but hopefully somebody can either tell me a comment of a better way of doing it. I'm going to try to do something later on. These are how water comes out. These are how water comes out. You know what I mean. These fittings have a threaded end. That's threaded. You screw it in, you hook up the PEX pipe to that side, voila. Now, like I say, this is general fill coming in. This is an air vent. I'll show you that in a second. Each of these are water coming out. One is for a drain in case you want to empty the tank and the other one goes to the pump. Let's go outside and I'll show you what I did yesterday that was terrifying. 
I had to cut a giant hole into the side of my bus using a grinder and a jigsaw, and it was kind of scary. Inside here, you have three different holes, three different outlets. Now, this is where you put water in. Basically, you stick a hose in, no pressure. It fills up the tank. That's the problem I discussed earlier. This one is for a city water. Now, city water is actually pretty darn simple. You take a hose, you put it in here, you turn your pump off inside, and you got water. Because the city water is already pressurized, it pressurizes your system for you. You don't have to drain anything from the tank. They're basically two different systems. Now, this little hole here is an air inlet. I'm going to show you in a bit how that works. Let's go look at the backside. The flip side looks a whole lot like the outside. This is where the main water comes in for the city. Again, it's just a PEX fitting. You put a thread on, you put it here, you run the hose. You'll see that in a second. The airline goes in right there. Now that I look at it, I may have miscut that. Might have to cut this out a little bit. And then this comes out. Now I want to start with this because this is my biggest problem and I'm hoping somebody can tell me how to fix it. Here's my biggest dilemma. This big giant non-flexible hose. It has to connect there and it has to go into this tank. And there's the problem. Let me show you. So this right here is the fill hose. This has to go here. This has to loop around and somehow connect into here. But as you'll notice, there's no room to bend this pipe and get on there without doing that. Now, I've been to Lowe's, I've been to hardware stores, I've been, hang on. I've been to Lowe's, I've been to hardware stores, I've been everywhere and nobody, absolutely nobody has the elbows to fit this pipe. So I ordered some from Amazon in different flavors. They'll be here in a few days and we'll see if we can get a nice little elbow thing working. In the meantime, to test this thing, I'm just gonna stick a hose right into the top, fill this tank up with maybe 20 gallons of water. That's the only way. So stick around. Maybe by the end of this video, those parts will come in and we will have joy. Now, according to everything I've read, there are two major parts to a water system besides the water tank and the faucet. One is a pump, one is an accumulator. Uh, let's discuss them both. Now, this pump is 12 volts. I don't know how I'm going to hook it up quite yet for the test, but I'm going to. We got a three and a half gallon per minute water pump. It's supposed to be quiet. This is a strainer, so water comes in from the tank this way. This keeps all the nasty chunks from getting into your filter. Now, every time you turn on a water, it senses that there's a draw. It senses that it wants water and the pump turns on. Now that means it's going to turn on every single time that you turn on the faucet. That gets annoying. Enter the accumulator. This is just basically a pressure tank. The pump will run and pressurize water inside of this tank. So what happens is, you know, pump, accumulator. Anytime you have a draw of water, a small one, it'll use what's in here. And when this pressure runs low, the pump will turn back on and repressurize that. That's at least according to what I've learned. After that, it's just a couple of one-way valves, a whole bunch of PEX fitting, and let's just do it. Two down, one to go. A couple little hints. These threads are vague in the plastic tank, and uh, I don't know how much to torque them down. They didn't sort of mention that, so I'm being very, very gentle with the pressure. I don't know how much will take to rip these out. I figure if it drips a little bit, I can always snug it up a little bit, but for right now, that's about all I'm gonna try. Now here's where the tight fitting fun begins. This entire tank, by the way, is propped up on two by fours, which were mounted into the floor because I needed to get this off of the floor. We need to put in an L fitting. And this is where I get to find out for the first time whether these things work as easily as they say they do. Okay, I don't know which one of you people at the factory wrapped this stuff, but there is some very bad karma heading your way. This is just... Ridiculous. So this L needs to stick out two inches away from the side of the tank. I don't know how far to push this in until it clicks. So I'm going to put little measure marks on this, stick it in, and then I'll be able to figure out how much the fittings each are going to take from this. So I know exactly how much to cut later, because I know me, I'll cut them too short. And the answer is one inch, which you didn't get to see because I forgot to let me check. Yep, recording this time. When you push the PEX pipe into the fitting, it takes exactly one inch. Now I need, hold on. I need this to be two inches away from the pipe, which means I need another inch in total. So if this needs to come out to two inches, I need to pop this sucker right here where it says number three. 
Now, by the way, this stuff is not nearly as flexible as I thought. It is really, really strong. And they give you these little clippers, which make it really, really easy. I hope that was the right length. So if this goes in according to plan, you just press this. Now with the shark bite, you can listen for one, two. When you hear it click twice, that's in there. That's that's almost exactly where I want it to be. Oh good, it does turn. I was actually wondering if it allowed you to turn once you pop it in. Now it is very important when you put a pump in that you got it pumping the right direction. There are arrows on this thing and they point this way, which is why I got the strainer on here to sort of remind me. The idea is I'm going to, let me spin you around so you can see. The idea is the water line is going to come up and loop around into the pump and then into the accumulator. By the way, this accumulator is non-directional. It doesn't matter where you put it. And then I'm gonna have the water line go back out. So this seemed to be the easiest way to manage plumbing because I don't want pipes getting in the way of storage. Okay, here's the next tricky part. Coming out of the accumulator, you need a one-way valve, and there's a little arrow on it. I hope it's facing the right way. The reason is, is you're gonna hook city water up to this thing, which is gonna be putting high pressure into the system. You don't want it backing up through the valve. So there's one of these that keep the pump from being inundated by city water. There's also one you're gonna see in a bit so that the city water doesn't become inundated from the pump. All right, next up is a drain. Now, sometimes you want to drain your water tank and your pump doesn't work, so you can't exactly pick up the tank and drain it. Now, can you? You got to run a hose through one of these ball fittings down through the bottom of the bus, which means I got to drill a hole through the bottom of my bus. You see this weird looking contraption here? This is the actual drain. And it's got a bunch of bends and twists, but there's absolutely no pressure in this. And it's gonna go at that hole we just, let me just show you how it's gonna work. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Basically the idea is that goes out the hole and this goes into this bottom drain plug, which if I've measured right, should. One, two. Should just go right over here and right down. Now I'm gonna nail these down so they don't move. You know, off and then on, off and then on, vice versa. I don't know which way is which yet, but basically this lets you empty the tank directly below the hose. And yeah, I know that hole's a little big. It was the only hole saw I had. I'll fill it with something. Okay, two more pieces to the puzzle, at least as far as back here. And I'm gonna have to detach you from the camera to show you what I mean. Now we've done this before. This is the Sitter Water Inlet. I've simply put in an L bracket and this is one of those one-way valves, hopefully Ah, look at that. I got the arrow pointing down. We're going to take a line from there and we're going into a T fitting right there. And then the water will head off towards where Nikki's trying to figure out what our kitchen looks like. Okay. I think I got this right. Let's kind of take a big walk through and I will point out everything that I have done. And then we'll power up the system in a little while and see if it all works. Now what you got here is two water sources. One comes in through the city water, comes down to a T and flows out to the rest of the bus. The other source comes from the water tank itself and comes into the other end of that same T. Now back through to get to the water is you got to remember you got the water tank which comes up and feeds a strainer, which feeds the pump itself, which feeds an accumulator, which holds the pressure, and then off it goes to the bus. So we do have to run a water line from there all the way to the front of the bus, which is going to involve <laughs> this fine piece of wood, and I'll explain that a little later. I also have to erect some walls, because unless I can put the plumbing through the walls and through these things, and I can't finish the plumbing, so put the carpenter hat back on for a little while. You ever tried to play with these silly games where you try to get something inside of a water-filled ball to... 
that's going to drive me crazy. A little while ago in this video, I mentioned that there was a diagram and some helpful instructions. Not a single one of them provided a diagram for how this is actually supposed to work, but <laughs> I'm going to do that for you. And indeed there are. What I want you to do is go off to Patreon and no, you don't have to subscribe. No, you don't have to become a paying member of the channel. There's a free post out there. The link's below. The link's everywhere. It's called Building the Schoolie at the very bottom of that one is the entire plumbing list. It's everything that I bought that we are putting into this fine bus of ours. It also has a kind of a lame diagram, but it gives you an idea of what needs to connect with what. Now I realize your bus build is probably gonna be different unless you try to go through the hassle of putting a giant tank inside sideways like I did, but hopefully this will give you the complete list of things that you could use to put together. Anyway, go follow that link. I truly hope it helps. <laughs> I have got the water inlet problem solved. I have created this thing. The elbows that came in place, well, they don't exactly fit. There's a couple things you need. You need a heat gun and you need some personal oh. lube. Now I tried it both with just heat and with lube and you gotta have them both. You gotta be warm and wet at the same time. This is really going south, isn't it? And by the way, once you get this warm and wet and you jam it in, it's gonna stay exactly wherever you put it. So you know, once you get it where you want it, that's it. That's all she wrote. I'm going to go see if I can <laughs> stick this in the bus now. Okay, all 1970s erotic film segments aside, I am really concerned about this. And I have limited ways of testing right now whether I'm going to spring a leak. I can do city water first, then I can fill up the tank and see if I have a drain, but I don't have 12 volt power back here yet. First things first, let's see if a pressurized system sprays water everywhere. And here's the really big fun part. The water turner off her valvey thing over there, it's way by the house. So I gotta turn it on, run like hell back to here because if it's spraying a leak, eh, I'm not that fast. Let's... Checking. Okay, I didn't see any leaks, but I'm gonna take the flashlight and you and I are gonna go see if we actually sprung anything. Uh, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful. Let's peek you down here is I put napkins down in there just to see if anything was leaking. I don't see leaking there. I really see leaking. Is that wet? I can't tell. This guy is completely dry. I have no idea, but I just heard a big, oh, I heard a big splash. I didn't know what had happened. Hang on. I got to show this to you. All of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, water's going everywhere. Well, the hose broke. So, Ah, that scared the crap out of me. And a classic example of what not to do. Let me show you how I'm going to test my 12 volt system. All right, what I did was I stole a 12 volt battery out of my son-in-law's truck. I'm going to connect it up with these fine wires and hopefully these two wires will not touch and short the whole system out. So hopefully all of this will work and I can put this back in his truck before he ever finds out. It's running, kind of. It stopped running. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's good or bad. The problem is I don't have anything open that I can actually run to see if it's pressurized, if water's coming out. It ran a little bit. I could hear it prime. I can see that the strainer has water in it and there's no way of testing. I guess we'll just walk around and see if it's well, we'll walk around and see if it's leaking anywhere. I'm going to turn this off just in case. Two things to note that I want to clear up for you. I am not a plumber and I am not a professional. Everything I am doing, I am doing on my own based on what the little research I could do on YouTube. Follow me if you will, but do it with your own grain of salt. Do it with your own research because I am not here to tell you exactly how to do it. I'm here to tell you how I did things. Hopefully it'll work for you too. The other thing is you probably noticed there was no red piping anywhere. I have it, but I haven't installed this yet. The hot water heater go, hot water heater, water heater. I don't know what they're called. It's going to go in the bathroom but i need to run the propane and other things before that happens so you'll see all that in another video and with that i don't know watch whatever's popping up i'm going to keep an eye on this water if you don't see me break in by the end of the video it means the water held otherwise <laughs> we'll see you next time